leader of the bunch. He served as an assemblyman, he's taught in our city. He now serves in the Congress, and he is now on the powerful House Ways and Means Committee, led by a man of skin like mine, Charlie Rainbow. Uh, William Pascal is a Patagonian who loves this city and who loves all people. He will come and speak on behalf of all of our elected officials. He will greet us, he will share brief reflections, and he will speak as he is able to do on this significant and special day in the life of not just African Americans, but all. Let's stand and greet our Congressman, William Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. I uh, was at uh, an awards uh, breakfast, Martin Luther King Awards breakfast, a little while ago. That's why I was a little late. And I said, uh, we got to get up the street, church of love. Been going here for 25 years, and I just was corrected. Congressman, you've been coming here for 30 years. So, and as I head towards my 70th birthday, God will it, God will it. If I may, pass the guard. I, if I may, I want to talk about something serious this morning and not just talk words. Martin Luther King, from the Birmingham jail, and you have to read that letter because I think it goes to his very soul. And while other speeches have, and other letters have gotten more publicity, I think that what he said in the Birmingham jail is what we Patersonians need to be hearing today, for sure. Amen. Just several blocks from this church, Brother Franklin was shot down. And I'm fearful that we've become numb to these things. People lose their lives, whether it be someone who walks the streets or a police officer that walks the streets, every life is valuable. Brother Franklin came from a family of service to this community. I raised his father's hand and he became the first promoted fireman in the history of this city. Larry Franklin. We can't become numb to these things. And in that letter, Dr. King speaks out against even some members of his own church and other churches who played it safe. Didn't want to get involved. Oh, things will work themselves out. Don't take any risks. <coughs> to those members of those churches and to the politicians, order was more important than justice. Since those faithful days, we know that justice is more important. We learned it. It took blood to get us to understand. He would not even be 80 today if he was still alive. He would be in the prime. Think of all of those he would have touched. And he has touched those in death as well. He has. He spoke out in that letter about Birmingham, which is probably the most, was most segregated city in the United States. Bull Connor, remember him. It's ugly record, he wrote, of brutality is widely known. Negroes have expressed grossly unjust treatment in the courts. There have been more unsolved bombings of Negro homes and churches in Birmingham than any other city in the nation, he wrote. These are the hard and these are the brutal facts. He did not recommend us to stay the course, Martin Luther King. 
Yet he preached to respond to justice and injustice is to respond in a non-violent way. We thought it was simply esoteric words, but he meant what he said. He meant it. He also distinguished in that letter between those laws that we should follow and those laws that we can't morally follow. The laws of segregation are immoral and illegal, he wrote, and he's right. So we cannot blindly follow the law. Most laws should be followed. We are a nation of laws, but there are some laws that are illegal, and there are, more importantly, some laws that are immoral. So he taught us the path of peace, and it is so fitting today, so fitting today, as we stay the course and our brothers and sisters get killed in other countries and we see the terror plague our own streets here within our own borders. How many more police officers? How many more sons and daughters and husbands and boyfriends and girlfriends have to be shot down? How many more guns do we need on our street? He would be outraged if he was alive today, and he is, in our hearts, he'd be outraged. One of the basic points he writes in this letter is that the action that I and my associates have taken in Birmingham is untimely, they say to us. Some have asked, if you remember history, quote, why didn't you give the new city administration time to act, Martin? The only answer that I can give to this query is that the new Birmingham administration must be prodded about as much as the outgoing one. Groups tend to be more immoral than individuals. Martin knew what he was doing. He spoke out against injustice. We know he wrote through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. He knew what history has failed us to understand. For instance, that Lincoln did not free the slaves, people freed themselves when it was time to free themselves. We are born free. The Constitution does not give us our freedom. The Constitution can only guarantee those rights that every man, woman, and child have inherently from their birth. This is what we believe. And whether one is a Muslim, or one is a Christian, or one is a Jew, or one is a Buddhist or Hindu, all people are born equal in God's eyes. Our job as men and women is to create a constitution that defends those basic rights. Regardless of where one lives, on an island or on the mountaintop, nothing changes about that. I have yet to engage, he wrote, in direct action campaign that was well-timed in the view of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. And he told a story about his own daughter in Georgia that they couldn't go. His, her, his daughter saw this uh, advertisement for the amusement park. It was Funtown. It was called Funland. Funland. Funtown. Funtown. And his daughter didn't understand why she couldn't go to have fun in Funtown. And everybody in this church this morning, everybody in this church knew why she couldn't go to fun town. Think of all of those things. I just mentioned this morning, I saw the movie, my wife and I saw the movie uh, in, in Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith and his kid. You gotta see that movie, wake us up. Sometimes you and I, we blame everybody else for our problems. We're down on everybody else but ourselves. We don't understand that God gave us the talent and the resources to do what we had to do. 
Martin Luther King spoke out against the hypocrisies of, our, of his age, and we see those hypocrisies all around us. We're waiting. We wait in the Congress. We wait in the council. We wait in the legislature. We wait for things to be perfect. They will never be perfect. Only God is perfect. We gotta make things change. We have to speak out against injustice. What could happen? What would happen? I'll go camping in Maine with my older, with my grandchildren. The world won't end if I lose an election. The world will end if I lose my soul. That's when it ends. Martin Luther King understood that. He softens our hearts when they are hardened by the facts of our time, be it war or war on our streets. Because that can get you angry. I see the empty words and the rhetoric. I walked these streets when I was the mayor of this city. I didn't have any police around me. You know I love the police, I love the firefighters, I love the brothers and sisters in blue. I didn't need any, nobody ever threatened my life on these streets. Ooh, I'll go down that street. And I said to Secretary Ridge, who was the president's former secretary of Homeland Security, don't tell me about the terrorists who are gonna come into this country over our borders. Tell me about the terror on the streets. Our parents who have to send their kids to school in the morning and just pray that they will return in the afternoon. Tell me about that terror. Tell me about that terror. And to those who moved out of this town, and to those who moved out of this town for a better life, pursuit of happiness. Oh, we're stuck here. I mean that in a nice way. We want to be here. We have a mission. We're on a mission. <coughs> Reverend King, Dr. King said, we're on a mission. We're on a mission to say hello to our neighbors, to help them. We need to reach out to Officer Franklin's family after he was put into the ground, not only before. Not only at the wake, not only at the funeral, as so many of you were there. We need to reach out to them. We cannot forget them. We cannot. And I will end on this point. We need not to be moderate about justice. We need to be radical. We need to be radical. We need to bring justice to our schools, to the very kids that we send there every day. They need to be safe in those schools. We must demand that. And we must demand protection from our police department and stop banging them over the head every time they speak up. We turn them into moderates. We don't want moderates protecting us. We want people who are radical, who will respect people's lives. Respect people's lives. No one is advocating anything but that. But we want them to be radical about our protection. And we need to think about how we're gonna put that. This death last week was a curse on this city. It's a curse. I'm saddened. I'm deeply saddened. When I back, when I was in the Congress this past week, I talked to all my brothers and sisters. I talked to Charlie Rango. I talked to John Lewis, he almost cried when he heard. 23 years old, a one-year-old child. We can't become numb to these things. Right. Dr. King warns us when we become numb, then we will accept other deaths. Terror becomes accepted on our own streets. And we worry about what's happening over in the Mideast and Central Asia. We gotta worry, first of all, about filling our own potholes. We need to worry about our own streets and our own neighborhoods. We need to take care of one another. So I'm sorry I spoke too long, but I have to speak to you from my heart today. And I went back over the week 
on his letter from the Birmingham jail, and nothing better reflected in my heart. It reflected my own weaknesses and my own ability to tap my own strengths, which there is no excuse for. I did not give up my citizen rights because I became a congressman. I'm still a citizen of this city. And I intend to be buried here. Hopefully not soon. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for all you did.